Hi guys, welcome to the last week of remote learning. Um, I hope this experience has been uh, okay one for you guys and I hope we've taken something out of it. Um, so we are not going to be learning new material today. Instead, what I'm gonna do with this video is I'm gonna take you through uh, a video clip of me and Rocky walking around Castle Island. I'm just pointing out some of the physics that we see. So one of the things I'd like you to take out of this class uh, is that, you know, the universe uh, relies on these rules of physics that we've talked about, and it's everywhere around us. You can't escape physics. And I want you guys to maybe start recognizing some things as you go about your daily lives um, that you may have learned in class. So let's take a look. Castle Island. We're going to be looking around to find some physics because physics is everywhere in our world. Um, so if we look here, we see some boats that are floating, right? And we know that uh, <laughs> the forces are balanced on the boats. That's why they're at rest. Okay, so I drew a free body diagram of, of uh, that boat that was on the water there that we saw. So, uh, as I mentioned, the boat was at rest, which means that the forces acting on the boat were balanced. So, if we were to draw, or if we were to look at, sorry, this diagram here, we see that there's one force vector pointing down, which, of course, is the force of gravity, right? That acts on every object on Earth, and it is uh, equaled out by the force here that's holding the boat up at the surface of the water. And if you remember, the name of that force is called the buoyancy force. Um, so... If this object is at rest, that means it is not accelerating, which means the forces in the y direction are balanced. Therefore, the buoyant force must equal the force of gravity. Wow, there's so much cool stuff here. It's like, ow, I shocked myself. <laughs> okay, so that uh, super cringy clip there of me shocking myself on the fence. Um, was an example of when we talked about electrostatics. So we've all probably experienced a time when we've reached for something metal, say a door handle, um, and we've experienced a static shock. And uh, of course, we know what that is, is a buildup of charge on the surface of a conductor that when we put our hand close enough to it, the electric field force is large enough that the charge actually jumps from the conductor to our body and it grounds itself on our body. Okay, so, uh, First of all, that's the closest Rocky's ever come to catching a tennis ball. So I left the second half of the video in there, but I wanted to focus for a minute on the first half of that clip, which was when I took that tennis ball and I bounced it off the ground. So if you guys noticed the height of the tennis ball after it bounced off the ground, so the maximum height of that peak of the trajectory after it hit the ground was not nearly as high as the height that I actually uh, the initial height where I threw the tennis ball from. Um, and that is because, or what we can determine from that is that there was a loss of energy um, when that tennis ball hit the ground. And that's sort of something we should expect when an object bounces off a squishy surface, that it's not going to bounce back with the same speed. Um, and if you remember from our lesson on, or, or sorry, our unit on conservation momentum, we had talked about types of collision. And we said, you know, there are two primary types of collisions. There's elastic collisions and there's inelastic collisions. And the difference between the two being that for an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. And for an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved. So what we know from that uh, collision of the tennis ball onto the grass is that it must have been then an inelastic collision because kinetic energy wasn't conserved. Aren't those vibrating air molecules just so beautiful? <laughs> okay, so this next video clip, um, I asked a fisherman to cast his lure into the water so that we could watch the trajectory. And it's kind of hard to see, so you gotta look closely. What's that? A 
electromagnetic radiation? Okay, so if you didn't if you didn't catch the last one, uh, I was saying electromagnetic radiation because the guy was on a cell phone, and uh, cell phones rely on uh, transmitting data through electromagnetic waves. So I think you guys can probably all recognize what I was trying to demonstrate with the video of me on the swings uh, because we spent a lot of time talking about this type of motion. It's a type of periodic motion and it's called simple harmonic motion. And you might also remember that when an object's in simple harmonic motion at its maximum displacement, so for my, uh, in my case on the swing, when I was highest above the ground, right? the speed goes to zero, so my speed went to zero as I changed direction, and my height was maximized. And then as I went through the equilibrium position, my speed was maximized and my height was minimized. Speaking of simple harmonic motion, do you guys remember what a graph of simple harmonic motion looks like? So say you have a position time graph of an object in simple harmonic motion. That turtle looks like a sine wave. <laughs> Yeah, so a graph of simple harmonic motion <laughs> looks like a sine wave. Newton's second law, forces cause acceleration. Rocky was pulling onto the rope that I was holding onto, which means that the force of tension was pulling me forward, and I was accelerating. That clip is actually the last one I want to show you all. I was demonstrating, I was demonstrating action reaction pairs, which as you might remember, uh, is a product of Newton's third law, that for every action, or for every force rather, there's an equal and opposite force. Uh, so when I pushed off the pole, the pole was also pushing off of me. So uh, I really, this is sad. I really want to thank all of you guys so much um, for the work that you put into this class. I know that not everyone was super excited about learning physics, um, but I really can say that you guys made it so much fun this year, um, and I wish I had gotten the opportunity to spend a little bit more time with you guys um, and get to know you more, but I can say, <laughs> Rocky is trying to get trees, but I can say uh, that what I have seen from all of you guys um, is that you really are a group of kind, uh, hardworking, and adaptable uh, young adults, which those characteristics are so important as you guys grow up. Um, and eventually move on to your lives past high school. Um, so I genuinely can't wait to hear from you guys all, make sure or hear that your summers have gone well, and I expect you guys to stop by my class next year. Bye, guys. Uh, so the following clips are just some bloopers from uh, me and Rocky's adventure. Come on. All right, go.